I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. What's up, dude? Edward, hello. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. We have our first Working Class Holes <laughs> work email. From how, one ma- of, how, how many obscenities are in it? Is it just... Actually, it's a it woman. begin with fuck? Oh, really? It, not that women don't curse. I'm sure they do, but it sure. was pretty professional. Uh, it's not from a plumber? I, I, I was I, just—I I was really hoping we would get something <laughs> it's an from like office one. This is oh, great. Oh, it's an office. Okay, it's cool. Office. All right. Uh, if you don't know the show, my friend Ed here has worked in the service industry for ten plus years. So he's a waiter, staff waiter, all that stuff. Now editor. I am an office person, so I've only worked in really offices beyond the shitty, shitty jobs before that that were manual labor. So we get to serve both sides of the working class whole coin. And this one comes from an office. This is from mm-hmm. Laura. I'm going to protect her last name. Uh, Laura says, hey, working class holes. This is for both of you. I work a nine to five. So an office job, nine to five. Inevitably, someone emails me at 430 p.m. on a Friday. Oh, yeah. And then again at 830 a.m. Monday with the words just following up. Love this one. Ooh, dude. Oh, good one. Right. Good one. Oh my God! Dude. Would you like my, me to go first on this? I one? hear my wife complain about this all. This the is an time. office thing. Yeah. This is an office thing. Oh, I just uh, got a little fired up, <laughs> over it, dude. I'm like, I'm juiced. You you work on deadlines a lot, so I know you know some version of this. But yeah. let me just take it from the office yeah, perspective go, for go. our audience. So I've worked in offices for let's just call it shit, man. Almost twenty years. I've worked in offices. Uh huh. Okay. And the office culture has change drastically but not in certain points like it's changed in the landscape and how people speak to one another Mm -hmm. but the issues are always going to be the same when it comes to an office setting and one of those things are i am a type a right let's say i work in an office and i this i'm assuming this person in the email is a uh, a service part of the office, probably an EA of some sort or a project coordinator. Okay, someone who's probably the lower level. The person who um, got the email. No, the person who, who is sent the email? emailed us. Oh, the person so who emailed us is a like scheduler of but some she sort. She got the email. That's what she's complaining yes, about. Yes, the or complaint she, is, is this. She's not the person that sends it. No, no, no. So the complaint uh. is because <laughs> <laughs> I was uh. like, you know what? I know you're a fan, <laughs> Laura. <laughs> but you need to. Well, no, no, no. Need La- to take a chill. No, no. Yeah. Laura is definitely a working class hole. Yeah, like okay. us. Okay. Good. So Laura is probably doesn't say in the email, but I'm going to assume due to the email's complaint because uh-huh. I am one of these people. I have been one of these people. The lower level EA secretary, project coordinator, gotcha. basically doing all the grunt work that needs to be done. Mm-hmm. The aligning of multiple calendars, the ordering of multiple lunches with specific dietary restrictions, the, and just the mundane awfulness of travel agencies and bullshit. But also, but also, and this is where this comes in. Also, the leaders who are technically called leaders, even though overall their leadership skills themselves are lacking. They may have the credentials to get the gig to be paid that kind of money. So no one's saying that they don't deserve the gig itself. Right. But then you put them in a position to lead. Leading is different than just being good at the job. Oh, absolutely. Leadership is not given to everyone because you're good at your fucking job. Right, right. You know, like yeah. being a, a former quarterback and football player. Leadership is a thing, man. It's a, a muscle that's built. It's something innate at the same time. I just love how you always squeeze in. Always. Athlete. Always <laughs> athlete first. <laughs> it's just, the only thing I've ever loved. <laughs> Comedy is the other thing, and it has been so awful to me. Because you know what's funny about sports is I is that I did that on meritocracy. I come from right. poor. Yeah. I come from an awful background. There was nothing about me that was any good. And then I was able to make myself good at sports. Just... Yeah. Out of cl- just hard work. So sports is that's it was really, hard work. It's the beauty of sports. Really. And I'm talking about riding my bike at 14 to an empty field to train myself because 
Hey. My dad wouldn't do it. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking like That's I did that. Awesome, I'm, so I'm wearing it. Yeah. I'm wearing it. You can oh. call me Al Bundy. You can call me the dude from Napoleon Dynamite. I don't give a fuck. I'll still come out and smoke you. I got a fucked up shoulder. I'll still fucking drop a 50-yarder into your lap. That's who I am. Back to this. Now, <laughs> you are not a leader. So this is probably someone that is either one above this, the person, Laura, one above or maybe two above are ultimately her leader let's just it's definitely someone above her sure absolutely so yeah, the yeah. issue is is that if you were a true leader why one why are you sending me something that's that urgent on a 4 30 p.m right. on a friday right that's great that you work like that but also look at your paycheck look at mine look at where your upside look where mine is also look at the work i'm doing and what could possibly accomplish at 4 30 on a friday when you know i'm checking out at 5 p.m Dude, that shit is so that that always comes from and I, I get this. My wife gets these and, and we talk about them all the time. That comes from people that are bad at their jobs. Like, yeah, because you. Sh yes. If you're sending stuff out at 430 and then 830 like that, you're bad at your job. Yeah, you really are. Because when yeah. you send it, the follow up at 830 a.m., when most normal people don't log in till 9 a.m., right? When you send it at 8.30, you want to make sure that it was the last thing I saw on a Friday and the first thing I see on a Monday. Why is that necessary? Why is it necessary? And I'll tell you why it's necessary. Because one, you're bad at your job. Mm -hmm. Two, you think because you're at a higher level than me that I'm an idiot. That I can't comprehend something that's urgent. This could have been done this way. Here's what would have been great yep. for Laura. Uh, 4 30 p.m. I'm gonna have something urgent next week. I just want to make you aware of it because I'm probably gonna follow up Monday. I just want to get it in your mind. So sorry for the multiple emails in advance. That's leadership. This is what we got going on next week. I just want to recap because I'm gonna have a late start. That's I, leadership. I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be out of touch early yep. Monday. I just want to give you the list of what we need to do. Exactly. Out of the gate Monday because it shows me that you're accountable. It shows me that you give a shit about my personal time and what I'm going through and what I have to do. And that you've done the work. Yes. It, because a lot of times what these emails are, are just pushing off like, hey, figure this thing out that I keep forgetting to, yes. to tell you about. Yes. That's that's so much of what that is. And I'm, I'm going to be real with you guys. This episode, I'm pissed off. I woke up today. I'm out of my Lexapro, so I'm off my meds. They won't refill my script without some dipshit doctor giving another uh, clearance that he's already cleared. So I'm pissed off. And shit like this right now, I'm fired up. Like this, I wish I could walk into this person's office and throw their <laughs> keyboard through the window and then walk out. Because that's what it feels like to be a true working class hole. It's like you you definitely feel marginalized, but you are you are making good money. Like I make good money. There, you know, I'm I'm yeah. grateful for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the disrespect, and that's really what our tours used to be. You know, now you and I are working on something new, but like oh, it sure. was the it was yeah, I was making money. I gave up good money on a tour what we were doing. Right. To create our own thing because it wasn't going right for me. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And people don't realize like uh, all right, I gotta take it. I gotta take it. <laughs> I'm gonna jump in here. You go, please do. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna, kill I'm gonna right jump now. in because you know what's so funny. Before the show started, everybody doesn't know this. Before the show started, <laughs> Josh is like, "Dude, I'm fucking riled up today." I'm like, "I got laid last night." <laughs> I am like, "He's like, thank God you can offset because uh, I am so zen today. You really like, are. I'm just, uh, I'm feeling good." And you're such a good listener after you get laid. Oh, like, yeah. You are really in tune with me. <laughs> It really it clears it clears it really all the does. noise. It clears all the noise. If you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> bang it. <laughs> uh, I'll say this. So uh, you know, I've had all the the shitty uh, jobs, and then I got a good job as a editor. I, I worked as an assistant editor when we were doing like the SNL that SNL place, mm -hmm. uh, and then I became an editor, and I have. Um, I would I would get an assistant. So there's this first assistant I had, this kid, uh, he was an intern. Let me ask you this. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Being someone, I've never had an assistant. Yeah. But it's like the point I was trying to make before I got so frazzled is the respect aspect of it all, right? Is knowing how to respect another employee. Was that easy for you to do? So, so this is what I want oh, to okay. yeah, get to. So yeah. 
when uh, this kid, he was intern and he comes in. So I'm at the ad agency now. And like now I'm like starting out as an editor. And like I worked when I was like an assistant, I worked at like high end places. I was doing like Nike commercials and stuff like that. But I was an assistant and SNL stuff and all that. And then I go now I'm an editor. I'm bottom of the wrong editor. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's, so I'm working on garbage stuff. Uh, and this kid comes in. Uh, he's intern and he's following some other guy around and he's cool. We're just, you know, he's a kid. He's probably 10 years younger than me, eight years younger than me, something like that. And, uh, I go, uh, I go, what are you, what are you doing with this guy? What you, you like this? He goes, uh, I, I go, what do you want to do? He's like, I love being an editor. I go, dude, just stay in here. Just stay with me. Mm -hmm. And like, he was just like, I can do that. I go, you're an intern. You can do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just stay in here. Well, you know what's great about that? It, it, I just stole him. With that, that's what I mean though. It's like you came from the nothing ranks like me right i'm a nothing guy i don't come through the protocols that everybody else does i'm always like oh some one-off agency placed me mm -hmm. and then i'm just there you know like and the respect part of it comes from even though i could be making two million dollars a year but if i'm disrespected every day that's uh, gonna weigh on me yeah, yeah, yeah just like with the tour i could i was working i was doing good stuff but being disrespected yeah. It's like, how much of that is worth right. the money? Yeah, 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 Can I find a better situation? If I'm be pissed off all the time, like, it, is, it, is it is, worth is, it? Exactly. Same right. thing with, with an office gig. Like, I'm sure Laura feels this too. She could be making a fantastic living, but it doesn't always equate when you're getting treated like garbage. Like, even one level above a Laura gets so much more respect because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're not considered the subservient assistance of the job you know it's a whole different world that's all i'm saying a lot so, of that stuff is trickled down yes like a lot and you of that came stuff from is, that is so you could down. speak to this dude in a language that he can understand but the problem is sometimes you get these guys that want to be in the protocol version of this and hear you say that and rat you out or don't know how to take it right well, or does something dumb people you know because it's a creative you know it's a creative uh element too to the whole thing and sometimes people think that yelling and and just and being an asshole is part of being creative and it's it's really has nothing to do with it uh it it they've they coincide because especially in advertising well, like you're, if you're an asshole most of the time it's because you don't know that you're just irritated by details being missed which makes you creative and you throw maybe, it in a way that's awful maybe or sometimes these people that are just hacks that are just steal, you know what I mean? They just, they kind of like- They're swagger jacking something they saw exactly, that they exactly. thought was the image of a powerful director slash exactly, whatever. Exactly, there's there's a lot of like, especially in the advertising specifically, like there's just a lot of assholes in there. Um, but this, this, this kid comes through and he's working with me and then um, I get him, he gets a room. He gets uh, he gets his own edit thing, and it's so funny because he was such a dirtbag like me. I walked by. I'll never forget this. I walked by. He, now he's got a room, and he's like helping well, me. Uh, tell the audience what that means. So, like as an editor, as an assistant editor, you're just you're sitting in like outside the room, and you come in and like, hey, what do you what do you need? And you you go out to another computer, and you'll do like, oh, you need a Photoshop. It's the equivalent of having an office in an office gig. Like once you get your office with a right. name on it. So once you get a room, yeah, yeah. As an editor, you're gonna have a room because you are gonna have clients there sitting there as you edit. Like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. And then if I'm like, oh, I need like a title card or I need something, you send it out to assistant. I, I'll, guy. I'll have the assistant Person. come in. I go, hey, so see this? We need this and this because the assistant also has access to my footage, so he can like make me like little like string outs. Like, oh, hey, give me uh, fifteen. Uh, things of people laughing You know yeah, what I mean yeah. And he'll be like Okay cool 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 And then I'll just get it But so um, Then he gets a room His own room so And he's that like means a He's getting his own job He's now. like a yeah. junior editor Yeah 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 And I'll, I'll never forget it I, lo I love I, We hang out all the time uh, Still to this day <laughs> I walk by And uh, you know He's a New York kid He's got his foot And this is a glass Thing He's got his <laughs> Bare foot up And he's digging in his toenail oh. As I'm walking by I go yeah, <laughs> are you, what, now, are you, what are you doing? And this is the part that's interesting is maybe it would be different, you know, if there were more people like us in a, in the lucrative job scenarios, if you will. Uh, but like you did that because you brought that dude up. You well, brought him along. I want him to know you can't, can't do, that. do that. It's I don't care if I see it. And I get that. If I somebody work, else saw that's it. That's what I mean, though. And I'm I like, you can't. People can't see you. Exactly. Doing that. And you're schooling him. Yeah, totally. And I get that I miss out on opportunities because most of the people that want to give someone a shot, they're you know they're in a different place than me. So it's like I'm not meeting the the high end version of me yet 
to help me along. I've never met that guy yet. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it based on like like piecing together information to try to get where I got to get to. Right. And I think that's an element in jobs and in offices that people coming from data processing like myself miss out on yeah. is the mentorship yeah, you don't get that, that leads you into that job. You don't get that because I had because I got mentored. You got mentored. I got mentored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, all, I've missed out on so many jobs because the the hiring leader, someone stepped in and was like, listen, I'm your counterpart. I have another person I think would be better than the people you're looking at. I've lost jobs because of that. Wow. Because I don't know huh. someone that holds weight because that they rely on their colleagues to refer people. And if someone's championing you, that's a thing on their resume because that dude making it, uh -huh. if you were that kind of guy that was looking to make arrangements to like, look, also look at what I've done. I brought along John Smith, who is now head editor at fuckwad oh, right. i mentored that guy uh -huh. that's a big thing oh when you get into the office scenario like big big office politics who you brought up oh it's like nfl you're part of that coaching tree interesting that's real thing yeah, because you get let go you it's uh it's like a baby bird learning how to fly yeah. kind of thing like in editing like you just uh you get dropped out of the tree if you can fly you know what i mean yep. like listen i've brought you along now it's been two years yep it's time to fly yep uh or you know what I mean? It depends. On, and you grateful. I mean, because sometimes you see, I mean, there's people that are just assistants forever. Yeah. And they just never. They never. And, that place. you know, it's, plus also, if you lose if your getting, job at 55 mm -hmm. and you've hired and brought up 12 people that are now got their own teams. Well, that's the thing. Guess what? That's the thing. A job's open over here. So he went on. I'm here for the he, comeback. He surpassed me that he went on. To, oh, he made, so now he's bigger than you. He made. Well, partner. you chose comedy. He made partner at a uh, at a at a boutique uh, place, um, and then I mean that's that's a uh, that's like a title that I don't have partner. Yeah, like he was a partner at a um, thing. Like uh, as far as like editing and jobs like that, you know, we were kind of close in like the a clientele that we would get and stuff like that. I mean, he probably has better clientele than me, but um, but it, it's it's. Now we're both freelance, so we're back to like kind of like square, even. The, yeah, but the like, that you started at. Um, I was so happy for him. Like, I yeah. was just like, but you're you're right. You, there is a uh, there is a thing that like where, and that's the thing about editing too. Like, you're dealing with in advertising. Like when I got that job, like I couldn't believe just the assholes that were around. Oh, it, it yeah. And so like editors get shit on all the way through. So like back to the email. Like I would Gina would. Be like, I can't believe you're talking to Jamie. You talk to Jamie like that. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, dude, we got to get this shit right mm -hmm. because we're a team. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I talk to him like, yo, yo, yo. We got this, 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 yeah, and yeah, this. Yeah. Like, I, we have no time to fuck around. Like, we got to yep. get this done. Um, and being a creative and being a freelance allows you to speak how you need to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, when I talk, but you know, sometimes I'm a little curt sometimes. Sure. I yeah. am. And, uh, and I think it rubs people weird. Like we've been in meetings sometimes, and people take it as like you being a fucking asshole. Yeah, I'm just like I, I'm just gonna, but I'm just gonna like. <laughs> it's just I'm not, Kurt. It's I'm not. not a, I'm just Kurt. It's not rude. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, Kurt. Yeah, I'm just Kurt. Um, I guess <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe that means yeah, asshole. asshole. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but they seem to have two different definitions from from Webster himself. So <laughs> who the fuck knows? But that's what I was saying about that email too. Is like, uh, but I would never do. I would always be like, yo, this is we got a big day Monday. Yeah, this is what we got. Yeah, and I would lay accountable. It out. And we bullet point like it would be like I would have spent the only reason that email went out at four thirty is because I spent forty five minutes on trying it. to craft it. Yeah. Exactly. You know I mean? and, like, it, and you weren't asking for any action Friday. Right. It's just giving them a heads up that we're yeah. gonna be in the shit. I don't have time to type this out Monday morning. Monday morning, morning we need now. to get it out. Exactly. And see, but that's accountability and that's also understanding the position of the other person. And what I was saying about how the way they speak to one another has changed, but the problems are the same in the office structure. Like that's the PC way of in the 80s and 90s. You have this for me yet? Do you have this for me yet? Oh. Have we got this yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, That right. micromanaging, yeah. my thing's more important than your thing. Right, right. Kind of like, let me flex to see how fast you can get this done so I can make sure I feel like the important person that I am to this yeah. company kind of shit. That's just all that woke shit. It didn't change how people feel. It right. just changes how they say the shit. So I don't. my feelings don't get hurt. My feelings don't get hurt. So I'm all right with trying to hurt my feelings. But I would rather speak plainly so I could write 
So, Laura, here's how I'd respond if I didn't care about having a roof over my head to your boss. <laughs> I would say, guess what, shipbird? Uh, the same answer at 4.30 p.m. when you sent this on a Friday is going to be the same at 8.30 a.m. by a Monday. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Get in line. Here's what I have to do today before your thing. And I would list 30 things I got to do. Even like, oh, I got to feed my bird. I don't got a bird. I would just start making shit up, and I will get to it then. Go fuck yourself. Signed, <laughs> Laura. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now, Laura. <laughs> You wanted the class holes to help you? There you go. First 20 minutes of the show. We already knocked that's, my first email that's out. That's a good email. <laughs> that's a good email. Send more emails. Uh, there could be more of that in your future, especially if they don't get me this Lexapro. Because I, I, dude, if, 10 days off Lexapro and four vodka shots, I'll fight a police precinct. Yeah, wow. That's the kind of nut job I get. So now, do you have health You have health oh, insurance. Yeah. Do you have it through? I pay a lot of money for it. Do you have it through you I have, or through I have your it wife? Through, I have it through my wife, but I have my own as well if I need it. Oh, you have two insurance. I have two if we I need them. were talking about because Gina was like, we could get because uh, I was like, I don't know. What, what was it? Something that cost. Oh, that's what it was. So she, you know, I get all my health insurance through her. Um and when she didn't have Hellinger, we had to buy it from like the Obamacare thing. Yeah, no, I've never. Oh, dude, see, that's another thing is like when I turned 30, as much as I wanted to quit, you know, like the whole Day job. live on a couch and make or whatever. You know, I could never do that because I grew up so fucked up. There was no way I was ever going to live on a couch. Uh, stability to me meant I was winning at life, even if it was a uh, facade because I was paying for it all by credit card. I that's just kind of where I live, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. But the big reason why I didn't is because I was like, I need this health care because yeah, yeah. I was getting into a lot of fights. And I thought, what if, you know, rather than I'm in therapy to try to cure this problem of. Interesting. So that's why you kept health insurance? I did not want to get. Getting, getting a, I didn't want to get. If I got caught, I didn't want to like wow. have to go to the hospital oh, and wow. not be able to. Because I knew I needed the job. Like, it's funny because my dysfunction is, was so strong. But I still had this, because I was always on my own, this weird responsibility about me. Like, never laid on a payment, never, like, uh, all, the, like, ne yeah, 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 yeah. always had, I've been on my own since, like, 19, so I always had a place to live, uh -huh, always had, yeah. like, my bills paid. Yeah, like, I always had a job. Like, always, even when I was, like, like a fucking crackhead, look, I, not, I, got, I yeah. always had a job. Oh, yeah. No matter always. how severe my addictions were yeah. or how fucked up I was, you would never know it. Like in the gym every day. Like I always well, you really would know religious. It by looking at me, like I had broken teeth. You know what I mean? Like I just. <laughs> I think I was. I was really ashamed with how broken I was. I look. So like I wanted shit. to make sure yeah. when I walked in a room, uh, no one could see it. You no, wore it. You wore it. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember going. I remember going to the shore. Cracked with, teeth the whole with, nine. <laughs> with these girls, we were uh, we were waited tables together. We went to a Wildwood with these girls, and uh, I had like the true guinea you are at heart. Wildwood, yeah, yeah, the shore. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, love I it. Mean, it's just dirt bag. I mean, it's, oh, dude. it's more. It's so much. I identified more with the dirt bag aspect of Wildwood yeah, than, oh, than, yeah. the, than the guinea part. But uh, <laughs> we get there and like I don't have like we were out drinking all night and we kind of and went to uh, Wildwood. But like I don't even have like shorts that aren't like were previously jeans you know what i mean like all of my clothes are just like i just look like a homeless person and i have these flip-flops that are like three sizes too big because i borrowed them <laughs> from my roommate so they keep falling off my feet and the girl goes they're not even the same flip-flop <laughs> i had two different flip-flops on yeah, I mean, I was just always just I never really cared about anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see how like I wear like the same clothes. Like I, I don't. Yeah, it's funny when I first met you, I thought, oh, it's probably because he's colorblind. You know, it's probably a bummer for him to try to create any kind of style. And then I realized, oh no, he just no. that's the style is no style. Yeah, I have zero. Like yeah, literal, literally, literally no insight into none. why you would do something. Dude. It's just like, do, are they clothes? Yeah, they're clean. They do don't smell. I'll wear it. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the same with like, uh, I just got a haircut and- Looks great. I, I guess. I don't really, I don't know you what- You don't know shapes either. I don't know what to say to a hair. Like if I don't, I have to go to the same, I've been going to the same woman for probably 15 years now and I still don't know what to say. Like if- It's what, so wild that you're like that because you're so not like that professionally with our work. With that, everything you else, yeah. Fucking but when it comes to like oriented brother. When it comes to like my appearance. Your own shit. Yeah, I don't. Maybe take a little bit, because sometimes you gotta pump the brakes on the work. Maybe fucking kick a little bit of that into the appearance. <laughs> you don't 
I'm like, you're, well, you're 50 years old. You don't want to get a haircut yet? <laughs> you're like a six-year-old boy? I don't know how to get a haircut. The guy goes, what do you want to, in the back there? I go, I, you know, just cut it short. <laughs> I used to have to get my haircut by myself as a kid, uh, and I didn't know about tipping. Oh, uh-huh. And they hated me. Like, it was yeah. a $6 haircut, and they hated me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know. They would fuck it up, though. So I paid the price. They what do you would mean? fuck the hair. So up. they hated you because you didn't tip? I don't know how to t- I'm a kid. I don't have any money yeah, to yeah, tip. Right. You should see when I walk in, none of them would want to take me. There's yeah. like a family of barbers. What, were you difficult too? Were you always like No, I mean I'm I I'm s- the reason why I am today the way I am is because I was scared. Like it's interesting. My wife and I were talking about this because we have a son. I was brought up thinking I was being taught respect. Uh-huh. And I was being taught fear. I was scared uh, to talk to adults. Oh, right. You know, I was brought yeah. up with this weird thing where, like, you couldn't share an opinion. Right. Like, instead of people listening to you and trying to understand what's going on, mm-hmm. it was like anything they didn't like, they didn't think about why you did it or why it existed. It was just like, I didn't like that. I'm irritated. I'm going to hit you. Or mm-hmm. you, I'm going to tell you not to talk back to adults. So I just right. feared adults for so oh, long. Oh, wow. So I would, I would go in there... And they had a fucking wall of names of haircuts from the 80s. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And I was like, can yeah. I get the regular boys cut? And it was just <laughs> literally this guy demolishing your hair. He just get the... I don't even think he took out a scissor. He's just fucking... <laughs> he's just shaving it in different ways. Like, <laughs> If you picture... I can only afford to get a haircut like once every month and a half. So it would just look fucked up until it got long enough to where I could put some L.A. looks gel in it. I like how you it said down. Month, I'm like, that's my schedule. <laughs> well, I, I, three weeks is my schedule now. Oh, and that, three weeks? Yeah, but yeah. I get a proper haircut. Yeah. <laughs> it's a proper haircut. You know, a haircut like that. I mean, I, I might as well have been getting it at the prison or some fucking. Uh, I, I would have been better off at one of those I schools. Used to, I, when I first been to New York, I used to go to uh, the Astor Place. I, I think it's gone. I think it closed. The one go- beneath the subway. Yeah, dude. It was like what a kind six of cuts? dollar hair. It was like a six I remember dollar being cheap. Hair. Yeah, it was super cheap, and it was like there was like a hundred uh, hairdressers in there. Oh, so they it were was just. just a it was about big business of. of uh, but you could, when you find a person, you could request them. Oh, really? Them. Yeah, yeah. So I had this woman. I forget what her name. Her name was Cat, because she was like. And she was a space space cadet. Man. Yeah. Like just, she would talk about, she's like, uh, oh, you're starting to get a little thin up top. You know what you want to do? You want to make sure you want to, you want to put this oil on in the, f- the light of the full moon. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. Did you do it though? <laughs> no. Why? Come on. Some people know that. Some, well, we, every now and again, you got to try that shit. I didn't buy the oil. That's what she was like. Oh, she was, she, she was pushing she oil. Had, oh, forget she it. She had her like whole uh, like. Set up okay. with the crystals and if everything. She said, "I I'm found like, this thing." If she on, gave me a sample, yeah, yeah, okay, I probably still wouldn't do it because I live in an apartment. I mean, How do you get the, the light of the full moon? What does that dude, even mean? Were, do I gotta go. You were the doing roof? crack then? <laughs> no. Oh. oh yeah. You're telling me you were not out late enough at night. Yeah, to be tuned up enough to do that, I would have smoked that shit. <laughs> smoked oil. <laughs> I smoked that oil. You got any more of that oil? I smoked it in the light of the full moon. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like a werewolf, but I'm still thinning. Yeah, yeah. my hands are hairy. <laughs> but the, Why did they ever th- say that about jerking off that your palms will get hairy? What yeah, kind of I stupid never understood shit was that. that? Yeah. Why are people so dumb back then? Is it because we have so much access to information now Maybe that we think you, we're so smart? You can't you can't push like a falsehood really like you used to. Man. Yeah, right, because your palms will get hairy. And I, I don't even know where that comes. Oh, you're from. gonna go blind. That was oh, why am you I gonna go, go blind? blind? Like I'm gonna shoot it in my. I'm not looking into the dick. Right. It was bad. Was for that your what, eyesight or something? Right. You're just making shit up so you don't uh-huh. touch yourself. I guess Isn't so. Isn't that so weird? How against masturbation? Like, who cares what I'm doing with myself? Well, I mean, I guess people are insane. I guess there's those kids that don't leave the house. You know what I mean? They're just up there jerking off, like a 14 year old kid. So and- all that stuff came about because like. To get these kids out of the house, <laughs> you gotta make something up. <laughs> you big jerk it up again, you gotta go blind. Popular science, put out something with a kid with hairy palms. <laughs> it's scientific. We need to get these kids out on their bikes. The going blind thing, there had to be some kind of urban legend of a kid going blind that everyone bought into. Well, so this is interesting. I don't doubt that there was some kind of study 
because I see these studies now. Do you ever see these studies? I love these studies. I got one. I, every time I see it, like I bookmark it. There's one now that says uh, men who stare at breasts are more intelligent. <laughs> It's like that great Dom Herrera bit where he's like, uh, is a red wine great? Like red, drinking a glass of red wine a day. I'm, I'm butchering it. Uh, drinking a glass of red wine a day is good for your health. Isn't that great? What about like drinking red wine in conjunction with the lap dance was good for your health? <laughs> That's literally like what you're saying. It's 100%. I'm like, like what science Drinking red wine and getting a lap dance and <laughs> looking at breasts being I, all day. I fucking be, what's the guy who died who talks on the shit i'd be a hawkins type <laughs> that was true i would be stephen titty hawkin <laughs> dude i Where just imagine the scientist who just he got busted right like looking at like titty like his wife like yeah he's like all right we're gonna start a study and you here just formulize it to make it make sense <laughs> yeah. well uh i confirm these i mean these guys look at their iq tests it was written in the harvard journal do you like looking at breasts <laughs> you're also a smart man <laughs> there's never any like dipshit studies like this makes you a dipshit well, yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? It's always like these, these. Yeah. So I imagine I that. that there was some purpose behind uh, <laughs> going blind. I don't know about the Harry Palms. That yeah, seems insane. That's but the going nuts. blind thing, yeah. Um, that's funny. That brings that brings up an interesting point. You ever masturbated at the job? Yes. I don't think I have many jobs. Really? Many. Just to break up the monotony um, or actual stimulation. Let me think. The first job I masturbated at. Uh, I've gotten laid at the job. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like Never lunch break with a coworker a, at the job. Done that. That's a good time. I Doesn't was, end well. Good I was time. like a full blown drug addict, uh, and I was working. You don't say. I was working at this, and I was just up, and I, I was like doing drugs, and I had like, at the job at the job like, like crack at the job. Oh, uh, coke. Uh, it was just, oh, it's like bumps just, just in just the bathroom. Down. I would go to like, hey, I gotta go change a keg. Yeah, hell yeah. And then go in That was there, code word? And then, Did you have like a partner at the job you do coke with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, uh, hey, I gotta God, go change. God, that's the best, I gotta isn't go it? Check and you it. can get drunk well, or you, high with someone at the job. Or you could buy it off the sous chef. Oh, like, it was even, just, even better. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. right there. Uh-huh. Um, you know what's great about And cocaine? it was like a slow job, too. So I'm like, I'm gonna be down there for a while. I think this, I gotta change a couple of kegs. And I just started jerking off. I didn't actually. I was <laughs> like, well, I started jerking off. You get it up? I couldn't get it up. You coke kick yourself by the kegs? <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? Hey, why yeah. is there a... F I remember these guys in prison I knew. Uh, they, were, uh, they just kept... We were fucking around like, yeah, you got to get them fifis. And I'm like, what the fuck is a fifi? Fifi, for those people that have never served time, is where you can figure out a way from the infirmary to get rubber gloves. And then you can buy at your... Uh, Whatever you, the what's, the, the, the consumption, what it's what's under the C, yeah. whatever you know. Put money in my commiss commissary. Commissary. In your commissary, you can get lotion. Oh. And they get a towel. Uh huh. And they wrap it up super tight. Uh huh. And they put the rubber glove in the middle of the towel. Uh huh. And then they squeeze a bunch of the lotion inside the rubber glove to uh, to make shift Fuck pocket it. pussy. Yeah, right. So. Oh wow. I could see people being like, who making fifis by the kegs? Like, that's what have been the better move, is you making a fifi yeah. by the keg. This is, uh, so, this is a tip. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> working class holes. We're working class, I, we got tips. We have worked with many guys who've been to prison. <laughs> I and might that, actually try out the fifi. I mean, fifi. the fifi is a pretty solid move, though. I might try out a fifi. So it's a rubber glove, though? You got, well, you would, condom would probably be easier. Con but yeah. they couldn't get condoms. Yeah, right. They're not trying to encourage everyone to fuck each other in the prison. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, so it's rubber gloves, paper, t and uh, um, we well, get towel. the towel, like you, the white towel they yeah, would give you. Right. You wrap it really tight, and uh -huh. then you would wrap the like if you could get your hands on rope, you would. Oh, so it wouldn't come undone. So it wouldn't come undone. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they said dudes would borrow each other's fifis because some because well, you, you the change the glove. glove. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. yeah glove. Right. Ah, wow. Uh huh. Any measures to get laid, if I men. try that out, I any will, measures to get off measures to get off men. I'll bring the Fifi, in. right? <laughs> bring the, the proof. <laughs> He'll blow it up, You're put like, it on his head like Howie Mandel. <laughs> yeah, I walk it up, pull it out of my bag. You're like, get that out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this place; it's so sanitary. I got to do it all over again now. You I'm an OCD. A, you brought a goddamn. You brought your Fifi, Fifi in here? <laughs> get the fuck out of my house. Podcast canceled. Yeah, they tonight. would talk about how they would walk around like in the morning and step oh. on people's used Fifis, and they would get in fights over it. <laughs> 
Ah. Like flat out brawls over oh, wow. stepping on a guy's fifi. Yeah, right. Because you yeah. fucked up the, yeah, yeah, the well, knot. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Because you, you messed get it used up. to it. Yeah, yep. right. Yeah. <laughs> People would freak out. If that's your only form of release, it's you know, important. it's like it's, that's a high importance. The little things yeah. become so big when all your freedoms are taken away. Sure. You start to enjoy like the littlest of sure. awful things. Like now I'm trying to really put that perspective. That's how bad my life has been lately. <laughs> where I'm like <laughs> each sip of cold brew and like my kid laugh and I'm like, oh, OK, OK, let's let's yeah. lean into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like what's that uh, that old Eddie Murphy bit, right? Like where if you're. Starving, you're like, oh yeah, the, cra the uh, saltine versus uh, yeah, yeah, versus like, Ritz. Was that? that Ritz? Oh, that'd be Ritz. God damn. Yeah, that's a great. Cracker. That's, that's a Eddie Murphy Raw. That's a cracker. Oh, that's man. the whole reason why I'm a comedian is Eddie Murphy Raw. Oh, Eddie Murphy Raw is my reason for being here. Thanks, Eddie. By the way, Steve Martin, let's get small. Really? That was the first album I heard. That's yeah. the one. Oh, dude, I was like, what is this? Isn't that crazy? Eddie Murphy never had a day job. He's yeah. been a stand-up his whole life. Yeah. I think same thing with Chappelle. Chappelle. Just his whole, yeah. their whole lives, they've never yeah. done anything but stand up. It's kind of wild. And not rich. Yeah. Just yeah. dudes that made it. Yeah. Dudes that just made it. Yeah, it's so cool. Not because mommy and daddy knew anybody. Nah. Not because they knew how to market. They literally just... showed up to the comedy clubs, had something special about them that everyone saw, and now they're them. Do you know what I just watched last night? The Albert Brooks documentary. You know, are you familiar I haven't with watched Albert? that. Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but I like the one they did on his brother. Bob Einstein. Oh. That's a good one. Interesting. Because he's dead now, so it was an interesting documentary. Rob Reiner uh, and He did the Albert Brooks, Brooks one? They sit down, and they talk about it, and they show all his old stuff. That's I, awesome. A lot of stuff I didn't know, man. He's, uh, wow. it's, he's sneaky good at stand-up, but nothing I would be into. He was, he was, yes. Well, they had all the interviews. John it's like Stewart, Woody Allen. I'm not, I'm not into it, he but. Was, he, was like the first, he was like the first alt. Yeah. Comedy kind yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the. Because um, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be honest. Sometimes I used to think. Like in my early years, like a young comedian, like, why is everyone making this big deal out of Albert Brooks? I mean, right. defending your life's great and all, but right, 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 to right. me, that was all I knew of Albert Brooks, right. was defending your life. Right, right, right. But you see all that old Carson stuff, yeah. and it's like, oh, dude. Yeah. And he would, they, you know, they were talking about it, the Carson stuff, like, he wouldn't rehearse that. Oh, you're just going off the cuff? He had an idea. And went with it. Worked out. And it, and it went well so many times that Carson was like, hey, if you don't have to rehearse it, don't. It's better that way. Awesome, and that's called mentorship. That's amazing. <laughs> you know what I to mean? get mentorship, to I mentored like, by Johnny Carson. I man. know I'm in my 40s now, so looking for a mentor is kind of uh, past me, I guess. But I'm in. If you're actually yeah. ahead of me, and you <laughs> want to be my mentor, and you're a dirtbag like me, or at least speak my language, like hit me up. Because I've I've tried I've tried to skin this cat almost a million ways, so I'm getting close. Uh huh. Uh -huh. To running out of fucking ways. <laughs> there ain't no fucking Johnny Carson for me. I swear to God, dude, I'll fight a fucking homeless. Here's the thing about the whole. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> like, well, what happened? Uh, Where are we at? I, I, there's, you know, because remember they did that 100 best comedians like in the early 2000s? Uh, and at Comedy Central, when they were at their peak uh, of being respected for comedy, well, and they the did thing, like. That's the other thing. Early 2000s, lists became huge. Yeah, but they right. did one that was a pretty good mm -hmm. list at the time. Okay of the top 100 comedians of all time. Uh -huh. And the top 10, there's like six of them where they couldn't do their act now because it's like, it would be so passe or it just was funnier for in a different time. Yeah. It's like hearing chamber music. Like I have an appreciation for it. But that's the thing it, about It doesn't comedy, strike though. the chord. Comedy is not, it doesn't But then last. there are some on that list that are universal. Like the, because delivery is universal. Subject matter isn't always universal. Right. Right, but delivery cadence, uh -huh. uh, the way it's the way it's given to you, the vessel, if you will, is original. Right. So like prior to me, always gets a laugh. Always Carlin, uh, later stuff always gets a laugh for me. Eddie Murphy Raw always, always gets a laugh. When was the last for time me. you watched a Carlin bit? Uh, last week, but it was one of my favorite bits. Okay, from it's bad for you. Okay. That's special. Okay, uh, but that's like a th maybe that's nostalgia for me. But the, I believe the bit like a lot of stuff he does politically too to me rings true now that's true you know what if you because he's not necessarily democratic but there is a nostalgia element in there too they're that, always there, going to be nostalgic there is a nostalgic me. element because it's true like if i'm thinking about i'll laugh at that steve martin album i'll laugh at that today yeah for sure yeah um yeah Eddie dom herrera will always be funny dom herrera because he's a naturally funny uh, human man. like i'm a big dom herrera fan oh, and a lot dom. of people that are new comedy fans because you like 
your TikTok or whatever. I know I should on that. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't belittle what everyone's doing, but I really don't like the way comedy is distributed now. But Dom Herrera, for those of you that don't know him, uh, he is go look his shit up. Oh, so good. It, in fact, don't even go see him live. Him live is a, that's a good I, time. I would, I've never seen him live. Oh, yeah, he's, would love, live yeah. is where it's at yeah, for him. That, dude. Because I mean, he's that's like, the best way to see comedy anyway. It is. I mean, it's like it is. across the board. Yeah, it is. Like in a club or can't, anything like that. I'm trying yeah. to think of any special that is translated through TV for a live experience. And Eddie Murphy Raw, I think because it's a movie, Maybe, yeah. gets me there. Yeah. Um, Chappelle's Killing Him Softly, that made me feel like I was in the fucking theater with them. Because mm -hmm. it's that close-up theater in DC, I think. He's after a after a pop, he fucking high fives a guy in the front row. Yeah. Like it's just very much like that's to me like that puts me in the. I feel like I'm in there watching this. I mean, it's also that's a lot of that is Chris direction. Rock. Uh, bring the pain. But a lot of that is like direction. Yeah, like that is that's the trick of like a special is like remembering live, remembering that the special already happened. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when you're like in in post production on like you edit yeah, something because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've edited some albums and stuff like that. And like the thing is, is like the the special already happened. Mm -hmm. This is the representation of the special. Yeah. So you you are like now just trying to capture what happened that night. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's I mean? just like Dice's album, "The Day the Laughter Died." Yeah. You feel like you're in the room at Dangerfield. You feel like you're there that. with him, and that's Dude. why you love it. You feel like you're God, fucking there. I love it. That's why people love like those old records of stand-up yeah. like i have lenny bruce records i love them not because necessarily i'm dying laughing right i feel like i'm there yeah you're hearing the the drinks yeah, click a little bit right. people are smoking cigarettes you just i feel like i'm in that room the way the way albums used to be recorded like that yeah is so cool that's what i want to bring back that's yeah. how i want my album to sound like yeah. a lenny bruce record not right. like i get like it needs to be marketable to be played on serious but i feel like at the end of the day I want to do things my way anyways, and that's what I love. But I want to you, do that. It's the it's those big mics. Yeah. That's, you know what I mean? A lot of times there's these uh, condenser mics that um, that make everything like, it's like an MP3 versus like a like a yes, vinyl. like a vinyl. You know what I mean? Like, like that so mono. You get, right. You want that big, you want some of that room in there. You want that dynamic range, all that stuff. Maybe something's a little hard to hear every once in a while. You know what I mean? Like that kind of like real. Yeah thing yeah, yeah it's a cool sound I, comedy is such a beautiful thing and it's been so many months and years lately where i just feel like the overall product to me isn't what i want it to be and like overall like as a fan i don't know just talking and about the sound right now just i got, love like, it i just kind of get got, that's like, what i want chub. yeah, yeah dude, that's who i am man fucking... that's i i want to be that like that's if there's like, anything i want to go out and get up right now right, you know what I mean? yeah like, it's just so because cool. it makes it you make that's what i got into comedy for is that yeah. what that feels like yeah. right uh you can follow me at josh Ricardo. go to josh .com for all uh show dates uh ed uh you can follow me at ed mcgowan comedy on instagram go to ed mcgowan.com see my tour dates uh the, all three of them <laughs> <laughs> we're working on something big though yeah we're we got working some on big something. stuff coming up it's gonna be good uh and send us more emails that was yeah, a lot of fun today great so yeah working class comedians at gmail.com we will see you guys again next week you can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every wednesday you can follow us on instagram at working class holes also make sure you watch the full show on youtube all you got to do is type in working class holes and please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend come on 